boats. I'll probably save the tugboat for later. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. This time last year I made a video featuring a giant alligator and a steamboat. The model kit came with two boats and one of them has been waiting in my bits box for something to do. The steamboat model gave me a lot of trouble last time, so this time around I took some extra steps to keep from those same frustrations. I heat treated the plastic by very lightly going over the surface with a butane torch, an idea that I picked up from Craftsman. I then used plastic weld to join the pieces instead of super glue. After holding the pieces in place for a short while, they became firmly bonded. I had no trouble assembling the rest of the boat after taking those extra steps, and I realized that maybe my problem with the steamboat wasn't the steamboat all along. Maybe it was me. Both this boat and the steamboat are in the wild imaginary universe, so of course I had to throw some greeblies on this bad boy. I used a combination of plastic weld and super glue, depending on what I was sticking together. I added just enough greeblies to look mildly imaginary. Once I had all the greeblies on, it was time to craft the river monster. I knew I wanted something that matched the ominous presence of the alligator. And other than maybe a crawfish, I couldn't think of a better monster for the murky waters of the Mississippi than a whale-sized catfish. I've had a lot of requests for catfish on this channel, and I really like the idea, so thank you to everyone who suggested it. I was going to sculpt the fish digitally and print it, just like I did with the alligator, but decided to sculpt it from clay instead. I had a little extra time for this project, decided to have some fun with it. After the sculpt was done, I baked the fish and I took the boat and the fish outside to prime. I did prime the boat outside, but I read online that spray paint is bad for Sculpey, becomes sticky or tacky, so I brought it back inside and I primed it with an acrylic paint instead. And while I was at it, I went ahead and added the rest of the color to the fish with the airbrush. I browsed Google images for days looking for a photo of a whale catfish to use as a paint reference, but I couldn't find one. Luckily, no one who's ever seen one has lived to tell me that my colors are wrong, except maybe Jeremy Wade. He's probably caught a few. The last thing I did was spray the fish with a gloss varnish, and that really did the trick. And then it was time to paint the boat. After the fish and the boat were both painted, it was time to mix up and pour the resin. I've been using this mold recently for my resin projects, and I have to say it's super convenient. It has its downsides, but for projects like this, it's perfect. I got out my deep pour resin, but before doing anything with it, I made sure to put on some gloves and a mask. It may look like fun, but liquid resin is definitely not your friend. I added two parts resin to one part hardener, and then I added my pigments. I used a green, a black, and a brown as well as one drop of opaque white. This stuff is super potent and it goes a very long ways. After that, I mixed it all up. Something I've been told to try and haven't until now is use a vacuum chamber to degas the resin. I've always had trouble with bubbles in my pores, but this gets rid of most of them. The chamber is set at negative one bar of pressure, which essentially causes the resin to boil and all the bubbles rise to the surface. Most of them will pop by themselves, but all of the remainder can easily be popped with a torch. I've been told that the addition of a pressure chamber for the curing stage gets rid of the bubbles entirely. I may have to try that in the future, but this is great for now. After I had poured the resin, I popped those little surface bubbles with a torch, and I held the fish 
and the boat in place with some little arms. I then covered it, and I left it to cure for 72 hours. Seventy-two hours later, the resin had cured into a nice, solid brick. I unclipped the boat and the fish and began working the resin from the mold. And it is incredibly satisfying. I then cleaned up the edges with a hobby knife, and I gave all of the sides a shinier surface with a wet sanding. Started with 800 grit and worked my way up to 2000. I then used some water effects from Woodland Scenics to create a more realistic water surface. I spread it out with a popsicle stick and made sure to also include a wake behind the boat. I then set it aside to cure, and once it had cured, I came back with some white paint to make the wake look a little bit more turbulent. For that alligator build, my friend Creighton told me to include some cotton smoke for the steamboat, so I did the same thing for this one. Last thing to do was to put it on its base, and I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are great. Happy Easter everyone. Hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time. Uh -oh.